Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at creating reflection probes. We'll be looking at an introduction to reflection probes and how they work generally. Uh, we'll be looking at adding reflection probes and then we'll be looking at how to bake them. They are sort of part of the baking process. So light maps, reflection probes, and light probes are all sort of the one process in a way. Let's jump in. Uh, so here we have the space that we created with the light mapping tutorial. Main note here is that all of our assets are still set to static. Now, reflection probes are very useful in regards to creating reflections in a performance space. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have ray tracing or anything really cool like that in WebGL. So we have to use other techniques to create a, a reflection of sorts. Uh, reflection probes are static in that they don't really update with dynamic objects. There is a setting you can turn on uh, to do that to update like every second or so, but that bakes the reflection probe every second or so. So that will take away a lot of performance uh, to the space. However, for something that requires it, uh, that might be useful. That said, I won't be looking at that this tutorial. Rather than sort of explaining it, I'm going to show what a reflection probe is. So in our space, I'm going to create a new child object. I do this just to make sure things are sort of easier to understand. So I, keep, I like to keep things sort of separate and in uh, empty game objects so I can access things easy and keep things very neat with this. So the whole space, for example, is in the assets. Uh, reflection probes will be separate. Uh, light probes I might put in here depending on how many reflection probes or light probes there are. Actually, I'm just going to do a probes object for both light probes in the next tutorial and reflection probes here. So right mouse click on the asset where you want it uh, and go light and go reflection probe. Now I can add them up here as well. So light uh, reflection probe, but that will go in the root object, which when you collapse it, the object will be in the incorrect space. So usually I will use the right mouse click approach on the grounds that that is more where I want it to be straight up. So as you can see, we have our reflection probe. So the reflection probe source is this circle here. The source is basically everything that will be projected outwards to get the information to reflect. It was also taken into consideration where the avatar is in relation to this point to move the reflection around the character. In this case, I've moved it up to the middle of the room and about the avatar head height. So by selecting this one with the three dots here, um, I can move the asset uh, source wherever I like, but because I moved the whole asset, uh, that's where I want it. Uh, so I'm going to use this to kind of include all of the assets that I want to put into my scene. Whatever assets are in this box will use this reflection probe. A good example is any dynamic object, and most importantly there is the avatar themselves. I'll show a clear example of this later in the video. If I run on this side of these two dots, uh, the reflection probe will be incorrect. And if I run inside this bar, the reflection probe will be incorrect because it will be reflected from this location. So for simple spaces or low reflective uh, materials, uh, what this would be fine, but in more complex spaces where we're highly reflective, we would need to add more. Each reflection probe will have uh, an asset, uh, as in a texture, that will take up your limited uh, file size. And once again, the space is a maximum of 180 meg uh, for the total space. So every asset that you add in file size will eat into that. That said, um, I will want the reflections to be correct up here and I will want the correction, the reflections to be correct here. So I'm going to add a couple of reflection probes. So I'm going to name this one reflection probe, uh, main. So I'm going to move this to there. And I'm going to move this to there. Now, the reason I'm doing a bit of an overlap is because if you have two reflection probes, the transition between the two will be this overlap. Um, so a nice blend between two reflection probes will happen in this environment if there's an overlap. So let's, let's do an example of that. So I'm going to duplicate that. 
rename this one. We'll call this the stage. Uh, I'm going to move the asset. So I want the reflection to be from maybe there. And then I'm going to create the asset here. And I think that's good. Now, because the avatar will sort of be a little bit higher, I'm gonna move that up as well, just to there. Okay. So as noted, when the avatar is in this space, it will use this reflection. Um, over here, it will transition from this one to this one. And I, I, if I really wanted to, I could put one in the middle, but that's a bit overkill and I don't really wanna do that. Uh, once again, file size versus quality versus performance will always be the challenge. Uh, the last one is behind the bar. So I'm going to duplicate that again, bar, and then once again, three clicks, put this behind. Now notice how I can't go further than that. Uh, that is because I haven't moved the source of the material, which is there. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm actually going to move the whole object to there and then change the asset to there. I did notice that I didn't duplicate the file first, so I'm going to do that so the transform is in the, in the right location. So once again, there'll be a transition in this overlap here. But once you're in this side, uh, it will be the correct reflection probe. So we have our three reflection probes. Now let's look at some of the details on them. So we want these baked. We do not want these real time. I wouldn't recommend using that. I'd just use baked. Most of these I will leave alone. The only one that I will change is probably this one. So this is how big the texture is and therefore how big the file size of that texture is. Now, if most of your space doesn't have anything very metallic and shiny, so not very clear reflections, you can actually get very low. Uh, however, if you have like a 100% mirror, you would need pretty high. So balancing between sort of high quality or low quality, depending on the assets that you have in the space is part of the challenge. Um, generally, I will put them usually between 128 and 256. To bake a reflection probe, you can press bake here. Or uh, when you bake your light maps, your ref reflection probes will be updated as well. And then you can look at the bake at the bottom here. So every asset that is in this main box or any dynamic, dynamic objects that comes into this box will reflect this reflection probe. And then we have this one, which is slightly different. And of course, RP bar. Now, none of these assets are very reflective. So I'm actually going to change walls. Uh, let's make it as smooth so we can sort of see. And you can sort of see the, the reflection there. So if I put that up, you can sort of see that. If you want to, you can actually change the reflection probe. So let's go to main. And sometimes that will work. Um, and if you go metallic, then you'll have a very clear reflection there. There are many ways, especially with normal maps and metallic smoothness maps, to make the reflection map fuzzy so the reflection map can be smaller. Um, so this is a, a good example of what happens there. Let's jump in and have a look in the playground. Now notice how I am not in the reflection. <laughs> in this case, we have sort of an interesting case of an asset is rather large in the reflection probe. So it's a bit of an interesting case here. Uh, so there's that. So it's kind of a case of trying to figure out what is the what is the best way to create the effects that you want to do uh, with that. So I'd say maybe those two balls are not the best way to go, 
Um, so I could turn them off. So let's have a look at that. Delete that, just make sure it updates. So these two assets here uh, are affecting the reflection probe in a way we don't like. So if you want to, you can go to this, uh, so the pull down next to static and turn off reflection probe static. I did note that here I was baking a reflective object in the reflection probe. Uh, so I just made sure that all of the materials went back to sort of like a, or a less reflective element before baking these assets again. Now note that it will only bake the one you have selected rather than all of the selected objects at once. So make sure to do them individually. The other option is that when you bake your light map, the reflection probes will be updated at the same time. Now notice how in this case, we have the, the balls are not there anymore, but the lighting is because that's in the light map information. So yeah, there is a, a big, uh, choice that you have to make in regards to what is in the uh, light mapping, which is contribute GI, and what is in the reflection probes. And that's how you affect those two there. Uh, if you select tick here, it will make sure everything is on. I'm going to quickly duplicate one of these spheres and then apply a chrome material onto it. Uh, that way we can start showing some of the examples of different assets in different reflection probes. So notice how this object, uh, once it's in the main box, um, will have the main reflection probe. And then if I move it across here, you can see the transition there. And then go to the transition box at the end. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually move this up here and that would have the uh, third transition box. Now the avatar does the same thing. So depending on where you are, you will reflect the reflection probe you are in, depending on the location of where you are. Uh, so if we look at that here, look at that. But if we go over here, uh, it will reflect from the source to this direction. So as noted is pretty smart in regards to your location will sort of take that in, in note, but that reflection probe will not have any of this information on this side. So those are sort of the decisions that you have to make in regards to where are your reflection probes? How many of them are there? What size are they? So as an example, uh, this asset, so let's go one to one. So that, that's a hundred percent now. And at this distance, it actually doesn't look that bad. But if you go to the main stage and take this down to, let's say 16, it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, that said, if I had this asset at metallic lower, um, it's not as important, uh, especially if I have this down to like 0.5, like, like even at metallic, but less reflective. So even say, let's say 0.7, at full metallic, that bake, which is like 16 resolution, doesn't look that bad. Um, and you get that sort of element of reflection and that file size is ridiculously small. So there is a, a lot of balance in regards to how reflective is it, both in metallic and smoothness. But if you have an asset that is 100% uh, reflective, so metallic and smoothness is basically one, which I don't ever recommend because it doesn't look that realistic unless it's like a mirror, then it will look horrible. Uh, so then you would go to uh, your reflection probe and increase it until it looks good. So that's once again, not exactly good enough. 64 is not too bad because this asset is very small, but if you have a large asset, then yes, this would be pretty bad. Uh, again, so 128, and that looks pretty good, even though it's a, a a full reflection, for example. But if you have larger objects, then maybe you might want to go even higher. So if this object was really big, 
like so. If you're the avatar running around with this, uh, yeah, it would probably need to be a much larger texture. That said, that's not bad. So let's see what this all looks like in a space. So this is all very nice. Once again, it's a little low poly when you get really close. Note the file sizes jump considerably once you start getting in the higher resolutions. But if you're sort of further away here, that's fine. So that's another element is how close does the avatar get to the reflection? Um, and if that's important. So that's the reflection probes. Very useful for creating more realistic environments. Um, but yes, it is definitely a balance between uh, how, how high resolution is the reflection probe uh, versus the quality that it brings you, depending on the materials, assets, and how close you get to the larger objects that have reflection. So hopefully that's helpful. Happy building. <laughs>